Hello guys, there is Yoda, and today I got for you 1v1 from Forts of Limlet, Limlight, Limlight, I guess. Forts of Limlight. It's just a rest game for Forts of Eisen 2, of course, but looks really good. Our players are going to be in the north, in the top, we got Dwarf Empire Bingo, it's called over here, but it's Turgon, so we're gonna stick with this name. And at the downside, we got Celebrimbor playing as Isengard. So in this particular matchup, Isengard should definitely rush his opponent, trying to get with uh, such build as uh, Celebrim will show us with Furnace and Uruk pet, and then just go into this first match of a dwarf to just catch him off guard here and uh, not allow him to go forward with units outside his base, because definitely dwarf needs this the first matchup to produce and uh, at the same time getting units into the mineshaft, so this is a uh, typical strategy for Dwarf vs Isengard in the beginning of the game. As you can see, I'm giving the second chance for our uh, HD edition as well, uh, but I, as I stick uh, together uh, again, as I said again, I will play uh, on my stream, I will play a normal version or HD version, because I like those pounds of uh, all the uh, units. As we can see, Builder is in the south, in the south corner of the map, actually, almost. And I don't know what he's chilling out over here, maybe? We got another mineshaft uh, near on the middle, near the Warclar. And we got first pattern of Guardians uh, from Turgon. So Turgon decided he's trying to rush his opponent, while his opponent is going with Urukais and another battalion of Urukais as well. There are two battalions of Guardians, they will try to protect the mineshaft, and other battalion is heading towards uh, Isengard's base. Isengard, of course, doesn't have it crab eyes to mm, reduce the damage and uh, armor of those guardians and debuff them. But he got at least two battalions of Urukais. Uh, Celebimbo was able to take down the mineshaft over here, so it's kind of a win over here. He got, of course, in the formation. He's in defensive stance, trying to protect himself and uh, rid of this running call as fast as possible. And this other battle of guardians just will lost their momentum with running call, which is in favor at the moment for Celebrimbor at least for this moment. He's going with crossbones as well, so he's trying to protect himself as best as possible. As we can see, he will definitely rid of those guardians uh, in the back of his base, but in the front of the base, uh, another battle of guardians will take down the furnace. Of course, here comes uh, Crossbones to take down the Guardians. Running Call has passed out, uh, so there are no more buffs for Dwarven Army. And as we can see, this Mineshaft is still standing, of course. Uh, Salabirimbor hasn't got any time to uh, get rid of this uh, very important Mineshaft in the Dwarven perspective. So we want to stick with it. As we can see in the south, Turgon is going with uh, Pikeman, trying to creep the troller, and he will be successful, I think. Uh, nonetheless, those uh, Pikeman should uh, rather concentrate on the troll, not the troll cage, uh, not the um, cave troll, the lure. <laughs> Salabinibu is checking if his opponent was creeping the Warclaw over here on his side of the map. And he's going with Pikeman to creep himself, a really good move over here. While his uh, opponent uh, Turgon is heading with more and more Guardians, he will be able to creep the Troller over here. And how, ma how about Kumai points? We got uh, 300 for Turgon, while his opponent got uh, oh, 450. This is a really... Uh, it's really good in the of economy. We can see that Turgon just lost his builder in the north and the Mightshot is going down as well. Those Guardians are not in the position to take down all those Urukais in time. And now it's uh, Celebrimbor's time. He figured it out where his army, uh, when his opponent's army position is. And sh he should definitely go with some more crossbones. There is one battalion of those. Those Urukais should definitely be micro out there on level 2. You definitely don't want to lose uh, Urukais. They are so viable in the later game as well. In the meantime, um, Turgon is uh, going with more and more Guardians. It doesn't look like that he will go for something else at this at this point of the game. He doesn't have uh, lots of mine shots as we can see this mine shot is going could be destroyed by works even uh, so this placement wasn't uh, that great for Turgon as well. 
and the pikemen couldn't go out because those works were into the front of the uh, front enter of the mineshaft. That's why we got, of course, Krabites or Guardians. One Guardians with a charge ability has been used towards crossbows to push him a little bit away. But I think this battalion of Guardians is going down. There are lots of Urukais uh, there, receive level 2 as well, so that's definitely they're going down over here. So Turgon is going with more and more Guardians, but he doesn't make any transition to Archer Range or something like that. He got a creep on his middle side, he got 5 power points at the moment, he will get the treasure, so level 3 for Pikemans, so it's not that bad. His opponent got uh, more combined points, I think, yeah, more combined points because he got more furnaces. He's creeping as well, he creeps his uh, middle side and he's going to the south side because there is a mineshaft that you want to destroy as well. And at the moment Turgon will take it in from the south, really good idea to do it uh, after you creep the troller already so you can pop out some more hobbits and uh, get the pressure to reward your opponent. In the meantime, Turgon is going for archer range. Uh, a little bit too late, I got to say, but he doesn't have that much command points. He doesn't have that much uh, mind shafts, and he wasn't able to deal that much damage to his uh, Isengard opponent. As we can see, Isengard is going for berserkers as well as he adding another Uruk pet to be rather safe. As we can see, mind shaft from the south side is going down. Those Uruk eyes uh, pikemen should get definitely trying to get away. And they did. We got some hobbits on the field as well. There is Lurs with his uh, crossbones units. And uh, Terrapin Ball will take the northern uh, in. In the meantime, how many power points he got? Almost 10 power points for Terrapin Ball at this point, while his opponent got all, only 6. So it's not that great. And of course, it's Terrapin Ball who always pushes his opponent uh, back. As we can see, all those Guardians are heading back, all those Hobbit Alliance as well, from and then. So it's looking really good at the moment for Selbin, while he's getting the pressure down, he's uh, pressing his opponent to go back into his base, to be rather on his uh, own side of map, while Selbin War is uh, going to tag. Some units he will get with some Berserker, some Pikemen, some Crossbones getting the for in and pop out some Corsairs, so it's uh, looking really good for him at the moment. And we got first battle of Axe Throwers for um, Turgon, he got uh, almost 9 power points, uh, his opponent uh, just received Devastation and used it on the trees, and this is why he got uh, 2k resources at the moment. But uh, I don't know why, but Albino uh, isn't pushing his opponent. He got two berserkers. He got a uh, hero on the battlefield. He shouldn't be in the defensive stance because he's slower than that, uh, by this. Uh, it's like 15% slower. So we shouldn't be in the defensive position while running. And as we can see, there is only pub that, tur uh, that Turgon could choose uh, from the south towards uh, his opponent's base. His opponent is aware of the situation. He got the Krabis check out uh, the northern side. On the north, it's uh, Turgon who is trying to recreate some mine shafts and some guardians and axe throws from the base, but no heroes, no battle wagons, so it's going to be tough for a dwarf to do something. Definitely, if your opponent got some berserkers and pikemen plus. Uh, Crossbones definitely hard, and why this Lures is on defensive stance? He shouldn't be never on the defensive stance. Actually, I never use defensive stance at least. He's getting slower and slower, as we can see. He's at the same uh, speed as uh, Uruk uh, Crossbones, or even not. I don't know why this uh, Lures is in defensive stance. It's kind of pointless. But we get a little bit of skirmish, Carnage should be used, and it is still defensive stance. Maybe at the moment it's correct, because you will gain at least 100 uh, damage, um, and you will get. Uh, you would like to get, have more armor for your hero, but when this Lurus is running, you should definitely go for some neutral or aggressive stance. Definitely aggressive, because it's 15% uh, of speed more. But then, uh, almost level... Uh, level 5 for Lords, and while he's still in the defensive stance and hold Grant's uh, stance, he should be on the aggressive and he's running away. Really good job over here, trying to avoid those Hobbit Alliance summon. There should be some firecrackers from Turgon, 
I cannot see them. Uh, Lords will definitely get away. There are some towers expansion from the Isengard Fortress, so we should be rather okay. How about another side from the north? Dwarfen is uh, getting through, killing all those Corsairs. But there is no transition for battle wagons, there is no transition, no bank heroes from Turgon. Maybe he doesn't have that much resources, he got almost 1k resource, but he spent it on units. One more time, Guardians and Axe Throwers, they are not good enough Berserkers and uh, Crossbones, got to say. So this is why Turgon should make a transition towards uh, battle wagons, maybe and heroes, to be able to fight back with his enemy. And as we can see, they will switch the sides. Isengard is going through the south while his opponent is heading towards the north. And we got still those Hobbit Alliance. We got Lewis low in half. I don't know what he's doing. He should run back to his fortress and just stay here. Uh, Hobbits uh, haven't been used. Their firecrackers or um, uh, fireworks uh, that should be used actually on 1.09. Uh, Fail of Galadriel hasn't been used by Frodo as well, so it's not the greatest use of Dwarf and uh, Salmon. Turgon still got uh, this uh, southern side, uh, but uh, the inn has been taken and Corsairs could be popped out by Celebrimbor. But there is major attack, another, another attack from uh, Turgon. He's getting more and more mine shafts uh, on his opponent's side. Uh, and I don't know why, actually 10 power points for him at the moment. He will be, al I think he just been allowed to do it. As we can see, Isengard doesn't have that much units, but he's pop out units from this uh, Uruk pit at least. And he should, he should definitely consider destroying all those mine shafts, all those units and uh, take rid of entire army. Thing is, his lord is at the moment out of position and he got to make a choice. He can definitely attack his opponent. He got almost 15 power points. At the moment, 15 power points. So Palantir in and uh, Wiseman of Dalland are available with uh, heroes such as uh, Lurs. They should be okay and should definitely deal some more damage towards the base of Turgon, even finish the game. But it seems that uh, Lurs is going back with those crossbones. There are Crabines. They should be definitely over here. As we can see, there is a heroic statue from uh, for Dwarf. And there is actually a Vulture for Celebrimbor to take down all those units. That was too much for him. Gloin for Turgon at the moment. And uh, he keeping the pressure down, actually. He got enough units. He can pressure his opponent all the time. Two builders in the base of... Uh, Celebrimbor, and maybe he's waiting for Saruman. It's not the greatest idea, actually. His Lurus is out of position, completely blind. There is a work pit. I don't know why work pit, while there are lots of pikemen, or actually no pikemen, but still, they could be pop out. There is a glowing level 2, almost level 3, but of course, he will receive Shake Foundation on level 4. And Saruman wa uh, and Lurus wake up. Uh, he just realized that he needs to be near his army that he needs to get uh, at least leadership, 50% uh, damage and uh, plus 25% of gaining experience. This is very important to get as fast as possible this leadership. More towers expansions, uh, pin has been used, uh, Hobbit with the rocks. They are not dealing that uh, significant amount of damage towards heroes, uh, not like in Rise of the Witch King, but still and he's not going with war riders, as we can see. He just create a work pet and not create anything with it. Lure slow the half, got to retreat. There is one berserker actually. There is a towerist expansion, only tower summon. And with this lonely tower, actually, he will receive uh, leadership, 25% uh, of damage and 25% of uh, gaining experience. It's a barricade. And of course, there is some uh, require research uh, from the from the base because you can have uh, as well as uh, Dwarven Stalwarks as well as Siege Kicks. Shatterhammer has been used towards a barrack. Uh, at least that was barrack level 2, but, but Lurs is going to die by the slam ability. Miss Micro definitely by um, Isengard player. And now he's popping some war riders completely out of position, completely pointless. I think the work, uh, work pit shouldn't be in a Dwarf versus Isengard uh, gameplay used at all. Builder for uh, our Isengard player has been killed. And it looks like that uh, things are going to change. 
Glowing out of position at the moment. Fire by those all those uh, towers expansions. Should return near the Lonely Tower. We get some Guardians and Axe for us being pushed back by uh, Work Riders. But there are some Hobbit Alliance, uh, Hobbits uh, from an end to be an annoy for um, Isengard from the south. We got more and more Guardians, more and more Pikemen as well, uh, and Axe Throwers from uh, Turgon. As, as we can see, he is only using two boost structures and pop out more and more units. And it looks like it works for him as well as he doesn't have banner carry on his uh, banners on his uh, fortress. So this uh, Lonely Tower will not get uh, the upgrade, uh, which are banners uh, that could be useful actually. If, even with this heroic statue, it could be definitely useful to get more and more leaderships and uh, proceed to victory. Uh, Half warriors, maybe over here, maybe not. Maybe siege works could be definitely useful, and some catapults towards a fortress it could even end the game. Because it doesn't look like that uh, Celebrimbor is going to do something. He got almost 11 power points available, uh, but uh, he's pushing. Ba he's pushed back actually with all that he got. Some work rider is still doing a uh, decent job in destroying all those mineshafts. And there comes Hobbit Alliance uh, Rally Call as well. There is a Grabine's ability from uh, Isengard, so he's going to use it. And even Krakens are going to be used, so it's uh, really good for. Dwarf and uh, army and dwarf in general to use all the abilities of uh, hobbits as he hasn't been done it uh, last time. Heal has been used to heal all those units before even war riders appear. There is lures on the battlefield, uh, just uses cripple, receive level 5, so leadership is av available for him. Glowing level 6 at the moment, but he is pain, so he got to stay uh, near the fortress. It's really dangerous for dwarf to stay that close of the enemy's fortress without uh, being able to attack it. But there is lots of units, I don't know why Lurs is not using Carnage towards all those uh, Guardians and kill them off. And then concentrate on the Gloin. It looks like that Celebrimbor decided to leave the game. He could definitely get at least this uh, phase of the game. Uh, he was able to push back his opponent uh, to the Mineshafts at least and maybe took down uh, some of the Mineshafts near his base. Established his furnaces and economy back on the track. But this looks like it was too much for our Isengard player. So yeah, Turgon has been victorious. I hope you enjoyed this brief cast. May the force be with you. Feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel as well as follow me on Twitch. I'm streaming mostly on Friday and uh, Saturday. And uh, 5 GMT 2 time. Anyway, hope you enjoy. Bye bye.